Hello. Hello. God bless you. Yeah. C- could it? Could we speak somewhere where it's it's quiet? I can hear some noise in the background. Thank you. So I can concentrate. Hello. Yes. Could we speak somewhere where it's quiet so I can concentrate on what you say, please? Okay. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, hello. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, You're welcome. Thank you, thank you, sir. If it's possible to help, um, first thing is you call you, yourself Prophet Victor Emmanuel. Why do you call yourself Prophet? What does what does that mean? What does that What does that mean? Calling myself Prophet? Yes. Well, I did not call myself prophet. On Facebook, your logon name is Prophet Victor Emmanuel. Yeah, that's the name of my office. Your office? What What do you mean, your office? Are you a prophet? Yeah, I'm a prophet. Who appointed you as a prophet? God appointed me as a prophet. Are, are you moving the phone? I can hear a lot of crackling sound. Is it possible to sort of put the phone down so I can concentrate on what you're saying? There's no distractions? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I said God called me as a prophet. How did he do that? That's that's quite that's quite personal. Well, if I said I'm 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 a prophet, and somebody said, "How do I know that I'm a prophet?" Could you prove that to me, Robert? That's my name, Robert. If I'm calling myself Prophet Robert, um, uh, people have a right to ask me that that question. If you call yourself Prophet Victor Emmanuel, and you say God has appointed you. I have a right to ask you, how do I know that that is true? How do I know you you haven't just made it all up and given yourself a title that you don't deserve? Well, to a very large extent, um, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. That's what I feel. Yes, of, 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 of course. Of, of course, everyone is entitled to their own opinion. But many people lie, especially in religion. <laughs> Many people who, who, who head up religious groups give themselves titles and offices which are completely made up. They're made up by men. But they will say, if you speak to the Mormon prophet in Utah, he will say that God has appointed him. If you speak to the Jehovah's Witnesses governing body, they will say that this nine-man governing body was appointed by God. Uh, the Pope claims to be the 267th, I think, or 260-something successor of Peter. And the Pope claims to be an apostle. Um, there are thousands, probably now tens of thousands, of Pentecostal prophets and Pentecostal prophets running around the world. Uh, Kenneth Copeland is well known for going. He went to um, Nigeria recently. And he appointed Oye Depo uh, as an apostle. He laid hands on him and, and declared that Oye Depo, the head of Winner's Chapel, is now an apostle. So th- there's tons of prophets and there's tons of apostles running around. There's tens of thousands of them all over the world. Maybe even hundreds of thousands of prophets and, and uh, apostles. And they're all saying totally different things. And they're all saying God has spoken to us, but they're all giving completely different messages. How can they all be true? Surely 95% of these prophets, at the very least, are false prophets because they disagree with each other. And maybe all of them are false prophets, but certainly 95% of them have to be fake because one prophet will contradict another prophet and they'll contradict a third prophet and they'll contradict a fourth prophet 
And yet all of these four prophets say that God has appointed me, God is speaking to me directly, and they all give completely different messages. Definitely. Now, it's actually um, interesting. You see, the way God deals with each and every one of us varies. You get it? But it's the same spirit. Okay? Is the same spirit. Just as you know, we have um, a large percent of so called prophets who are fake. We also have um, a percentage of prophets who are real. Okay? Prove it. The, 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 fact that, the fact that they are fake is actually a proof that they are real. Prove it. They can never be. There can never be um, a, a fake of what is not real. But prove it. There were prophets in Bible times. There were apostles in Bible times. If there yeah. are apostles and prophets today, prove it. Just because there are fake apostles and prophets today doesn't mean logically there has to be true apostles and prophets today. It doesn't follow logically. The apostles and prophets, so it, you, the apostles and prophets claim 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 that they are apostles and prophets, like like Saint, uh, like the apostle Saint John, or 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 like um, Saint Luke, or or or, 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 or like Saint Peter, um, that who wrote the books of the Bible. Um, Okay, so are you of the opinion that there are no prophets on earth presently, or are you of the opinion that there are no pastors on earth? What exactly is the point? I never said that. If you can prove it to me, I'll, I'll believe it. But Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 tells me to trust in the Lord, that's Yahweh, with all of your heart, and lead not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. So I'm to trust in God. I'm not to trust in some man who comes up to me and says, I'm an apostle or I'm a prophet, just because the person says, I have this title. You yourself have just admitted to me many of them are fake. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. We, ha we have to trust in God to guide us, and surely God guides us through the scriptures. He doesn't guide us today through men called ap apostles and prophets. Definitely, God guides, even the prophet, God guides them through the scripture. Even the apostle, all are being guided through the scriptures. A prophet is not guided by, a genuine prophet is not guided by himself, is guided by the scriptures. A genuine apostle is guided by the scriptures. Anybody that is not guided by the scriptures is not genuine. Okay. You get it? The okay. is our basis of anything we do. Okay, you well, thank the you. Scripture in our Sorry, I interrupted you. I, I apologize. No problem. The scripture is our basis of anything we do. Okay. Okay, fine. So the scriptures are a, are a test as to whether the person is a true prophet or a false prophet. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, I asked you in text, could you prove to me from the Bible where people are commanded to pay a tithe today? I told you I'm studying tithing. Could you explain that today? why you believe people should pay a tithe today. Thank you. Okay. Um, before you ask me the question, you should, also, you should also ask me if I believe in tithing. I thought you did. I thought when we were talking in text, we agreed that we would discuss tithing. That was the topic. I'm looking... We've had so many messages... I think I deleted some of the earlier messages, but I thought that was what we were going to talk about. But if I'm if I'm mistaken, then I'm sorry. Weren't we going to discuss tithing? Didn't I? I mentioned to you I'm a Trinitarian, and I'm also studying tithing. Okay, okay. Now, for the, for the purpose of your, of your study, maybe I should just say this. You get it. Now, this is it. To a very large extent, if you would ask me what's my opinion about Titan, according to the revelation I have from the Word of God, if 
you ask me what's my opinion okay. about tithing. Yes, what is your opinion about tithing, Victor? Okay, my opinion about tithing is the fact that to a very large extent, Christ has done everything we need to do. Christ has paid the price. Mm -hmm. Your tithing does not change God. Your tithing does not um, you get it. Your, tithing, your tithing does not change God. Your tithing does not reduce God's love towards you. Your tithing does not increase God's love towards you. You get it. The scripture says, "While we are yet sinners, Christ died for us." So your tithing don't um, change God's opinion and change God's love. Your tithing doesn't doesn't don't, don't do any of all that. But you know, there's a part of the scripture where the scripture said, "Honor the Lord with your substance." You get it. Um, the scripture said, "I think the, that's honor in the Lord with your substance." I think that's in Proverbs. Good. And when we're talking about honoring could, the Lord with your substance, could we actually find the verse? Because I hate paraphrasing. I could be wrong. Let me do a little search for it because I've got Bible Gateway okay. up here. Let's have a look. Honour the Lord. Let's take out the U. Let's do the American spelling. Honour the Lord. I'm having no luck on this. I'm sorry about this. Ah, here we are. Proverbs 3.9. Do you know, I've actually had my Bible open to it, Proverbs 3. <laughs> can I Can I read it to you, please? Yes, yes, yes. Proverbs 3... Proverbs 3 5 to Go Proverbs 3 10. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, okay? Which is what I think I quoted earlier. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Here's the verse, Proverbs 3 9. Honour, American spelling, honour the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruit of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. It says, honour the Lord with your possession. Are you saying that this verse is commanding Christians today to pay a tithe? Now, the, the, this, this verse is not commanding Christians to pay tithe. It's not... Well, that's the subject of my. Cool. That was the subject of my text. Do you believe Christians today should pay a tithe? Because I don't believe Christians are under any tithing command. Yeah, I'm also of that. I'm also of that opinion. Well, then there's Christians nothing to discuss. Under... Right, but well, there's nothing to discuss. <laughs> we both believe that Christians are not under tithing. You weren't very clear in your answer. I assumed, obviously wrongly, and I apologise, that you were in advocating tithing but we both agree that there is no command for christians to pay a tithe today yes there's there's no command for christians to pay tithe today you get it yep. now but i just want to say so, some, something something i just want to add something to it now we are not obligated to pay tithe as compulsion now but for example someone like me i made up my mind that um from my increase, the increase of my business, the increase of what I'm doing, from the blessings I get, I make up my mind personally that I'm going to give God 70%. That is, when I mean give God, I, I, I'm not talking about giving it to God directly. I, I, I made up my mind that I'm going to give 70% of whatsoever I earn, whatsoever I get, whatsoever blessings God is able to bless me with. I made up my mind I'm going to give 70% to the church. I make up my mind I'm going to give 70% to the work of God, to anywhere I see church planting projects. I make sure I give that to, to that to that work. I don't even get my point. So I made up my mind to give God 70% of all my increase. So it's not because I'm obligated by this, but because I love God. Um, well, I love the work of God. I can't remember the verse, but the Bible says that when you give, 
your left hand, I think it says something like your left hand should not know what your right hand gives. I think you're not correct in telling me the percentage that you give. You should keep that quiet between you and God. I think it's a sin for you to sort of brag to me about the percentage that you give. It should be private between you and God. It should be done in secret. You shouldn't be going go around telling other people how much you, you give. Now, now the, the reason why I'm telling you now is because we're actually having a, 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 an interaction where you, I feel you want to learn and I want to learn. So this is this is not a congregation. We're actually discussing an issue, which I which I, I believe um, um, we have got to be open to each other to a very large extent. So it's not be, um, the aim of telling you is not because I want you to know I'm more wealthy or I don't have. No, the aim is I'm, I'm trying to make a to make a point, which is I don't have to believe um, I must actually pay tight. You get it, but anyhow you put it, if I make up my mind, I'm giving God a particular percentage of my income. In the olden days, it was referred to as tight. In the in the in the old in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. when you have a percentage you're giving to God on a regular basis, it's referred to as tight. It was so tithe. Just, then, Are you saying it yeah. was tithe in the Old Testament? Yes, it, in the Old Testament. Right, they paid three tithes. There was a, a smeet a year every seven years where they're exempt from tithing, from, from animal yes. produce and, the, um, and farming. I think they still paid tithes from the fruit trees and, and such things. Yeah. Uh, and then every 50 years there was a jubilee cycle when they're exempt from tithing. It was extremely complicated to work out. Uh, there was also a system of, of offerings between 10 and 13 offerings on top of the three tithes. And you only paid tithes if you were a landowner. So if you worked as a blacksmith or um, you were a steward, paid a wage to manage someone's farm. If you owned no property, no land, your tithe was zero. But for those who owned land, the tithe came to roughly 20 percent because they were three tithes of 10 percent the poor tithe was only paid twice in the seven year smeter cycle and with all the um seven year and 50 years exemption from tithing it worked out at roughly 20 20 percent um, but why are you telling me this surely surely this is should be private personal between you and god it's not for yeah. you to broadcast I'm, I'm not, to I'm other people sure. like a, you know yeah. i mean the bible talks about the um um pharisees coming to give money to put money in the poor box in the temple and the pharisee would um, arrive at the temple he'd hire some trumpet players and the trumpet players would walk before him blowing their trumpets so everyone can see the pharisee um giving his uh, tithe or giving his sorry his offering into the poor box uh, the tithe was a tax uh, the offerings were voluntary um, so we're not to do that whatever we give we're to keep it between ourselves and god me i don't give a penny I wouldn't give a penny to the local churches where I live. I wouldn't give them a penny. I wouldn't give them a farthing. I wouldn't give them the spit out of my mouth. Not after uh, what I have seen and the way I've been treated and the absolute blasphemy and heresies going through many of the churches. Now, I'm sure there are some genuine Christians in all of the churches where I live. I don't know of any. But I don't deny for a moment that even in some pretty poor churches, I believe there are some genuine Christians. But um, I don't see um, the local churches where I live as, as being worthy. You know, there's so much heresy in these churches, so much blasphemy, so much sin. And the worst thing is that you can never, ever, ever sit down and talk to a Christian church leader and say, why is this sin going on in your church? They won't discuss it. No one, you can never, ever correct the sins that are happening in the churches. That's why I gave up years ago, and now I wouldn't give them a penny. Now, now that's, that, that's, that's, that's pretty. Now, but I want you to understand something. 
you see um thank god for this conversation we're actually having okay thank you i believe i believe um i wasn't even the one you wanted to, to discuss with i believe you actually wanted to discuss with somebody else so because from our conversation we never had any conversation like that so I'm actually a different person entirely. And I sense in my spirit that maybe God actually wants us to talk on a more deeper level. You get it? In terms yes. of certain things. You see, when we talk about the body of Christ, are you aware the body of Christ is not perfect? Are you also aware that the church is like a, a, an hospital. Do you agree with that? Where's that in the Bible? <laughs> Do you agree that the church is like an hospital? Where's that in the Bible? If it's not in the Bible, I don't care. Okay. I, I, could, I could say to you, the church is like a Boeing 747, or the church is like a Mercedes, or the church is like Big Ben next to the Houses of Parliament in London. Or I could say, the church is like the Beatles pop group. All of this is just meaningless. You know, unless I define my language, I'm just, I'm just using emotional, emotive things. Um, could, could I ask you, what is your view of Jesus Christ? Who is Jesus Christ? Who oh, is Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is our saviour, is our redeemer. Okay. I would be a Trinitarian. You, you would agree, of course? Does you believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? Well, everyone believes in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Mormons believe in Father, Son, Holy Ghost. So too do Iglesia oh, Christu. So too do the Jehovah's Witnesses. So too do the Unitarians. So too do Baptists, Methodists, Anglicans. It's what you believe about the Father, what you believe about the Son, and what you believe about the Holy Spirit. I would be a Trinitarian. Are you a Trinitarian? I, I don't understand what a Trinitarian means. Um, well, the Trinity um, would define who God is. The Bible says there's one God. Okay, Deuteronomy 6, 4, there's one God. That God is one spirit, John 4, 24. Um, that God is one being, one essence, one substance, one spirit. But this one yeah, God, I could, could I, this one God exists personally, distinctly and eternally as the Father and as the Son and as the Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ is the Son whom the Father sent into the world at the Incarnation. That's a, a sort of brief summary, a simplified summary of what the Trinity teaches. I'm surprised yeah, that I you're a church. That. I'm surprised that you call yourself a prophet and you you're not familiar with the Trinity, sir. The, 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 the something here is um, you say you are a trinit trinitarian. You get it. So I need to get your definition of that word. You understand that we have different trinity in different ways from different perspectives. I mean, Nigeria, you are in the U.S. away. <laughs> so, I, that's um, why I don't go to church anymore. Sorry, I interrupted you again. That's why I don't go to church anymore. It was the Trinity. It was primarily the Trinity, as well as the most disgusting sins happening in local churches that got me out and I got fed up of speaking to different church leaders and everyone had a different take on what the Trinity was most of them were modalists some were Nestorian many of them were tritheists and very often it was all just made up and and I I just thought it's a waste of my time you cannot sit down with these people and discuss this they just all turn on you like like a pack of wolves and they just want you out of the building because they want the building filled with idiots that they can control um, no, no, no. I, I think, let me just say this as I wrap, as I wrap up. And this is it. The scripture said we should not despise the cardinal believers. You get it? So, you the know, Bible no says what? what? Sorry, slow down. The Bible says what? We should not despise the gathering of believers. Oh, I see. A Bible, a Bible bully verse. That's Hebrews 10, isn't it? They all use this verse to say, you've got to come to our building. 
actually I don't have to go to a building do you know the context for Hebrews 10 um, 20 24 and 25 I've, I've had this so often where Bible bullies try to use Bible verses against you to tell you that you're some sort of sinner if you don't go to their church. I'm a man in my 60s. I don't care what some 20 year old pastor or some pastor with no education in his early 30s wants to say to me. I don't care. I've heard it so much over the years, I don't want to hear it anymore. The context, the context, can I, can I explain, can I, can I explain, can I, can I, can I explain? My day is very busy. I will squeeze out the time and call you and then I will give you one hour so we talk and talk of everything. But right now, I'm okay. very busy. Today is my son, today is my son's birthday. Okay. And I need to give him some call. Yes, of course. So, Happy birthday to your son, sir. All, all the best. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Um, Hebrews 10.25 Hebrews is, is, is written about a Jewish sect it, it mentions a Jewish sect in, in, in Hebrews chapter 1 these people are converted to Christ but they used to be a weird Jewish sect that not only worshipped Jehovah they also worshipped angels that's why it's very clear in Hebrews 1.4 that Christ has become so much better than the angels a good verse to share with Jehovah's Witnesses because they say Christ resurrected as the Archangel Michael well how do they explain Hebrews 1.4 Christ has become so much better than the angels Hebrews 1.4 he has by an inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they and Hebrews 1.5 for to which of the angels did he ever say and now quote from Psalm 2, you are my son, today I have begotten you. So at the first chapter of Hebrews 1, it's saying that Christ is better than the angels because there was this Jewish sect that came into the church. Uh, they converted to Christianity and this Jewish sect, this weird Jewish sect, unusual and weird Jewish sect, said that um, we don't just worship Jehovah, Yahweh, because they wouldn't use the name Yahweh, but we also worship angels. Now, this sect then left the church and they went back to the worship of angels. So that's the context for Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much more the, as you see the day approaching. Well, the manner of some, it's not talking about me, this isn't some sort of Bible bully verse that anyone who doesn't go to some uh, lunatic Billy Bob church has this condemnation over them. This is talking about these Jewish believers who left the church and went back to worshipping angels. So that's the context here. Um, I would like to attend church. Um, I can't because I'm barred from every church by court order until 2031. I face a six-month prison sentence if I just put my foot in the door of any church. No church has come to my defence because they don't, they don't give a shit about me. And um, I got this because of sin, wicked sin, in, in local churches. I won't go into the details, but basically church leaders weren't playing Monopoly. Okay, They met up late at night and they weren't playing Monopoly. Okay, They were doing other things. And um, there was also a man who um, did something bad uh, to a child. He got four years for a second offence. And all of this was covered up by the local churches. All of this has been covered up for years by the local churches. And you can never, ever sit down with these people because they talk and talk and talk and they talk around the topic and nobody is accountable the standard policy in so many churches is when there's a scandal, sweep it. It's like dust. You sweep it under the carpet so nobody can see it. It's not dealt with and people don't come clean and they're not honest and they're not truthful and don't admit to it. And if that's Christianity, I want nothing to do with it because I have higher... I, I don't want anything to do with it. Anyway, it's a shame that we... Um, um, didn't speak for longer perhaps we will speak again i thought in text he advocated tithing but i i presume i got that wrong 
one of the problems with people on Facebook is that it's no good talking to people on Facebook because you can have lots of discussions in text with people on Facebook. And after having lots of discussions in text, you don't know what on earth they're talking about. Because so many people speak in riddles, they speak in vague, imprecise language, they don't define their terms. And so it's very difficult to know what people are talking about. And I think that goes to Prophet Victor Emmanuel as well. Possibly I misunderstood him. If I did that, I'm sorry. But it was difficult on Facebook to know what he was talking about because he he would post a lot of posts. But everything he said to me appeared to be extremely imprecise and vague and unclear. And I think people do this because they know if they're vague and imprecise, then nobody can tie them down. So there's lots of lovey, loviness and hallelujah and glorying and praise Jesus and the glory, the glory. But you can't tie them down to anything. Anyway, thank you.